Hi everyone, I'm Adrian, another caveman, and in this video I'll show you a tool I've made for Substance Designer that will let you import your own meshes and use them in your material creation workflow. The first thing we'll want to see is the mesh export. I'm doing it with Max, you can do it with whatever you want. The only rule with this setup is that the mesh has to fit in this 10 cm diameter sphere that we have here on the screen. The scale reference is included in the zip file. The reason why is that it has to fit in uh, my cages, which you can see on the screen right now. In, if your mesh um, doesn't fit in the sphere, it'll just be cut uh, during the bake, so you really need to double check. We'll now make a new substance file. You can use my template, I highly recommend it, so you don't have to import my cages again and you already have a folder hierarchy in it. Uh, but you'll have to duplicate it and rename it. The reason is that uh, Substance Designer doesn't let us um, have meshes inside the template. You'll find uh, three folders in here. Bakers, Meshes, and Baked Hate. Bakers has my cages and cameras. Meshes is for you to drag and drop your meshes into. And Baked Hate is where you'll be able to, uh, to store your baked data. So here we just opened the baker. You'll have to select your mesh. Make sure to select the bakers you need. Here I just need 8 and opacity, but if you ever need to bake some color map or roughness map, metallic maps, whatever, feel free to do so. You just need to have UVs on your uh, on your mesh and to plug in the texture as well. So here we'll select the cage. Yeah, this, okay. We'll add some deletion. So we don't have any issue with the alpha. And here I've made custom names for, uh, as it's easier to um, to store the, the big data after that. You can do the same uh, by renaming them with custom names in your substance parameters. So custom will let me have bolt opacity and not bolt uh, from mesh, blah, 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 blah. So you have to be, to do this setup once, but you can, uh, as you can see, export preset and load preset. So just do it once and export this preset, and then you'll be able to load it again for your future meshes. So this was for Atlas 1. Let's do Atlas 2. Remember that uh, the CAMS files are your low poly. So you always need to bake from it and load the cages and the high poly from it. That's very important. So same thing here. Once you've baked your atlases, they are linked to the mesh. So if you ever need to update the mesh, you can still do it. And then just right click the cam file, the cam obj, and hit update baked data. And it should reload the, should reload the atlases with the right updated mesh. So now we've seen all that and we have our atlases ready. Let's uh, see, let's have a look at the few nodes I've packed in this zip file. So only the this atlas can be used on this. This stands for this arrangement atlas. You'll get that part later on the next node. Plug your height and opacity into the atlas setup. And you'll see it gives it lots of colors. Here's how it works. 
the R channel is used for the 8 map, the green channel is used for a random grayscale value, and the B channel is used for a gray value that you define so that you can later use it as a color ID. The disarrangement atlas is a rotation gradient. Uh, the lower you go and the more rotations were applied from the initial clear position, except for the two columns on the far right, which are just generic random rotations. So the next node is the disarranged atlas crop one, which will crop into our atlas to extract the bit that we need. Um, you you have up to a hundred possibilities. Playing with the seed will bring them up, and you can also uh, have a grayscale output. Uh, I've left a few parameters, four of them. They're here to define the crop zone. So if you only need to crop, uh, let's say the top left area, you you'll be able to. All you have to do is define uh, that x starts at minus five and ends at zero, and y starts at zero and uh, at minus five and stops at zero. My bad. Now the next one is a height sampler, um, it's basically a tile sampler that I've uh, edited so that it could work with our atlas and it's going to use uh, all of the atlas, the 100 possibilities are going to be used in this height sampler. It has exactly the same parameters so it's pretty handy. Um, let's lower this. Now you'll see that if I play with the random position, oh yeah, and also I have I've added the same parameters so that you can only uh, crop in the, the area of the atlas that you prefer. So I've moved my position to uh, 79, and as you can see, we have some overlapping, and that is bad for the final render of the material, as it uh, will create a bit of a bit of like it's a lack of realism as pieces can't go into one another just like that. So the pile layering node will actually fix this a bit um, as it's using two height sampler. One of them is here to make a mask for the other one. So let's have the same values here. And let's then play with the mask threshold. We'll push it to 0 0.5 first, so that you can see how it evolves. All right, we, we have less, but we still have some. Let's push to 1. Oh, we've got less of them. All right, we, st we still have one tiny bit here. But I'll live with that. So this way our height map makes more sense. Now the um, the pile layer luminance, let's directly plug what we've just made in it. And let's say you want to change the luminance uh, of your height you'll have to go through that node, otherwise you'll have to split it and edit the red channel manually and that will take some nodes and some time. So this is just a shortcut to do it. Uh, you'll see it comes pretty handy when you have like different uh, different layers in the same material, like for instance if you're making a pile. And finally, the last node is the Mesh Tilt node, which is the, the most fun, see of all, as it lets you uh, tilt around the object live and see what it gives. Um, using a ball on it wouldn't be the best move, but inputting some funny geometrical like shapes 
could be interesting and then blending them one into each other and stuff or maybe having, having coins with like details on them all right i'll now give you a few advices about this workflow um the first one and probably the main one would be uh, about the interpenetration of the elements between them um even even with layers I couldn't really get rid of it and as you can see let's yeah let's load this as you can see uh, some elements are like literally cutting into the other ones under them um, even with a good layering in your material you'll still find that as some of the height maps have a rotation that does that and the minimal grayscale value is still is still um, higher than the highest of another element that's under it. It's um, it's not fixable unless you would place it by hand, I, I guess. Uh, second tip is about our normals. As you can see, I have two different height maps, and one is specifically here to generate the normals. Let's see the difference between the two. Um, if I if I don't use a height map without any luminance and generate a normal of it, then the deeper we go and the weakest the normal is. So make sure you have two height maps, one without luminance and one with luminance. Here is our color ID uh, that um, separates elements between them. And here is the one you can use to have color variations. Next advice, um, you, you could directly blend together different atlases so that you avoid making too much, uh, too much layers. And this way you have more variations on the same atlases. All right, so I think this is it. And you're all set to start with uh, this workflow. Uh, don't hesitate to comment this video or the thread on Polygon uh, for any questions or if you'd like to share uh, what you've came up with uh, using this. I would be uh, very interested to see all that. Thank you very much and see you later.